Hey everyone, we're going to find the intervals on which f is increasing or decreasing. Uh, find the local maximum and minimum values of f. This is our function here. And find the intervals of concavity and inflection points. So in order to find where the intervals on which f is increasing or decreasing, we need to take the first derivative and see where it's uh, positive and where it's negative. So if it's positive, it's increasing, and it's negative, it's decreasing. So when you take the derivative, f prime of x, we use the chain rule on that. That's going to be 2 cosine of x times the derivative of cosine of x is sine of x. And then take the derivative of negative 2 sine of x, which is negative 2 cosine of x. And then you set it to 0. So let's factor out a negative 2 cosine of x. And inside we get 1 plus sine of x. And we can go ahead and say where is this um, positive. So um, if you set uh, negative 2 cosine of x to 0, um, divide both sides by negative 2, you get cosine of x equals 0 at uh, pi divided by 2 and 3 pi divided by 2 on this interval. And then uh, 1 plus sine of x gives you sine of x is um, greater than or equal to negative 1. And that's going to be at 3 pi over 2, which we already have. So now we need to, we've got our intervals. And I use a little sine diagram. We're going from 0 to 2 pi, and we have pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So you merely plug in um, points in here into your derivative, your, your angles, and see where it's increasing or decreasing. So if I plug in um, pi over 4, this is going to be... Uh, Let's do this. So pi over 4 here is going to make this value negative, this value positive. So a positive or a negative times a positive is a negative. And for pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, let's plug in pi. This is going to be positive, and this is going to be positive. So this is going to be positive, and then we can plug in um, a value between, uh, let's plug in, uh, 7 pi over 4, and we're going to get um, positive or negative and positive, so that gives you a negative. So just plug in some values. Now, what that means is that it's since this is decreasing, we're going to draw it like this. It's decreasing, let me change this a little bit, decreasing here to pi over 2, increasing to pi, 3 pi divided by 2, and decreasing after that. So here from 0 to 2 pi, we have a local minimum here and a local maximum here. On the right side of the graph, this is going to be positive and this is negative. All right, so now all we have to do is that these points figure out our local uh, max and min. So we plug in f of pi divided by 2. You plug that into your original equation. You're going to get that equals negative 2. And if you plug in and evaluate 3 pi divided by 2, that's going to give you um, equals 2. So we have... Pi divided by 2 comma negative 2 is your local minimum right here. And 3 pi divided by 2 comma 2 is your local maximum. And then if they want you to write the intervals, just write them out like this. Uh, 0 to pi over 2. This is going to be pi divided by 2, comma, 3 pi divided by 2. This is where it's increasing and decreasing at the ends here at 3 pi over 2, 
comma two pi. So this is uh, these two are decreasing intervals, and the middle one is increasing. Now for concavity, we're going to take the second derivative test and see if it's concave up or concave down. So the first derivative was f prime of x equals negative 2 cosine of x times 1 plus sine of x. And I'm just going to use the product rule and take the second derivative. <coughs> so I'm going to uh, take this derivative. That's going to be uh, positive 2 sine of x. And then just copy down this piece. Then you add um, this piece, so that's going to be negative 2 cosine of x times the derivative of this piece, which is cosine of x. Now let's clean this up. We're going to get, this is going to be 2 sine of x plus 2 sine squared of x, and this will be minus 2 cosine squared of x. All right. Now, uh, I want to, because we're setting this to 0, I want all of this in terms of sine. So I'm going to use my Pythagorean uh, identity and write this as 2 sine of x plus 2 sine squared of x minus 2 times 1 minus sine squared of x. And let's see what we get. Uh, we get 2 sine of x. These are all equal. Plus 2 sine squared of x minus 2 plus 2 sine squared of x equals 0. All right. Now let's do um, combine. We have four of those, so it's 4 sine squared of x. Um, then we have plus 2 sine of x minus 2 <coughs> equals 0. Now let's factor out a 2. And you're going to get 2 sine squared of x plus sine of x minus 1 equals 0. And that factors to 2 times 2 sine x minus 1 times sine of x plus 1 equals 0. All right, so I'm going to write that on the next slide. So we're going to do the concavity test. So we have 2 f double prime of x equals 2 um, times 2 sine of x minus 1 times sine of x plus 1 equals 0. Now to solve, you set this to a 0, and you get sine of x equals 1 half. So that's going to be x is pi divided by 6, or 5 pi divided by 6. And then we have sine of x equals negative 1, that's going to be x equals 3 pi divided by 2. Now that we have that, we're looking for, <coughs> basically, let's look for where sine of x is greater than 1 half and where sine of x is less than 1 half. And I'll do a little sine diagram. And we have a 0 pi divided by 6, uh, 5 pi divided by 6, 3 pi divided by 2, and then 2 pi. Let me take these arrows off there. All right. Now, sine is less than 1 half. If you think of the unit circle uh, here, um, also, 
uh, between 5 pi over 6 and 3 pi over 2. It's negative in that quadrant. At It's less than 1 half. It's also less than 1 half from 3 pi uh, over 2 to 2 pi. Now between pi uh, over 6 and 5 pi over 6, it's positive. And just remember that on the unit circle, that's this quadrant 1 and 2 there. So now, now that we have our intervals, this would be concave down, concave up, concave down, concave down. So what we're looking for is a switch. So we're switching from negative to positive here at pi divided by 6. And we're switching from um, uh, positive to negative at 5 pi divided by 6. Here we don't have a switch, so we don't uh, use that. <coughs> so now all we have to do to find the inflection points is find uh, f of pi divided by 6. And you plug it into your original equation and that's going to give you negative 1 fourth and then um, f of pi 5 pi divided by 6 equals negative uh, 1 fourth. So this is where the inflection points occur and um, that's what you need. You can write it as a point, pi divided by 6, comma, negative 1 fourth. As far as, and then do the same thing for that one. As far as the intervals go, if you're writing the intervals, you're going to write concave downward, and you can write it as um, 0 is less than x less than pi over 6. You can write it that way or you can do it this way 0 comma pi over 6. It's also concave downward from 5 pi divided by 6 and 2 pi because it's concave downward all the way through here and then on the other interval you can write concave up and we can just write it as pi Divide it by 6, comma, 5 pi divided by 6. And these are the inflection points. This is your x. This is your y. And that's it. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.